Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome again to our um, daily morning Bible study. That's just about a 15, 20 minute uh, session I like to give you each morning, Monday through Friday at least, and then give you the big course on Sunday morning. Hopefully you're watching these, and I like doing these because I'm able to touch on subjects, uh, many more subjects, uh, giving many M-I-N-I lessons on um, M-A-N-Y topics. So this morning, uh, because of time, I want to get into immediately get into Proverbs chapter 26. We talked yesterday about spiritual shedding. Today we're going to talk about toxic people. Spiritual shedding, how things can be transferred from a vaccination. We've seen it. We've seen the new reports coming out, even for the COVID vaccines, that they're shedding, meaning that some of the symptoms that some people were experiencing in their bodies can be transferred by some someone else that just gets close to them. Even if you don't take the vaccine, uh, the people who have taken it can give some of the same symptoms. It's it's they release it somehow, some way. It's released from their body, just in proximity. And so, I I've, I did this yesterday on spiritual shedding. I thought it was very important. Because just being in the atmosphere of people who are negative, people who are, and, and, and people who are, are um, that, that are bitter, have a root of bitterness. You know, the scripture says that some develop a root of bitterness whereby many get defiled because they just can't keep their mouth shut. They spread their offenses. And we have to be careful hanging out with people that spread offenses. Uh, with that being said, as I studied Proverbs chapter 26, uh, I got down to verse 20. I thought, my goodness, it's Proverbs 25 and 26 talk about it. So I'm going to pick it up really where I left off yesterday here for the next 15 minutes or so. Uh, in verse 20 of, of Proverbs 26, verse 20 says, Without wood, a fire goes out. Without a gossip, a quarrel dies down. Stop and think about that. When you don't put wood on a fire, it eventually will die. If you remove a gossiper, now if we, remove, if we remove gossip from a relationship, the relationship will live. If you don't remove gossip from a relationship, that the relationship will die. If you keep adding wood to fire, the fire never goes out till it consumes anything in its path. If you don't deal with the gossip is like a fire, it consumes. If you quit feeding the fire, it'll die down. So uh, two things, one, for the gossiper, and there are many in the body of Christ. There just are. I've encountered so many of them in the body of Christ, and they just, they're, they're very unhappy people. They're flatterers. They pretend friendships until they don't get their way, and then they see their true side. Uh, they, they cloak their offenses with half-truths. I mean, they, they still half of a story, and, and, you know, these kind of things are, are extremely painful. You see them all the time, you know. When you go to the grocery store and you look at the, you go to the checkout, and they've got all these rumors and innuendos from these movie stars and politicians, and so mo so much of the time they're totally wrong or they're half truths, and and they get sued, and they get and they and the people that sue them make millions upon millions of dollars, and yet they continue to do it. Why do they do that? Because they make they make more money, even though they know they're half truths. They make they get something out of it more than they feel like that they're that it costs them. And there's just something about a gossip. They just they're, they're, the Bible says that evil people they just can't get rest until they've hurt somebody. And they just they they find satisfaction almost like a drug addict. A drug addict doesn't find any relief. Anybody that's addicted to something they find no relief until they partake of it again. Then it takes another part of their soul. Every time they participate and partake of it, it takes another part of their soul. And gossipers are the same. They're, they're addicted to trouble. They're addicted to untruths. They're or they're addicted to hurting people. We talked about yesterday about how, how uh, I don't think we talked about it, but, but Ham uncovered his father. He went out and said, well, but dad's drunk and he's naked and passed out in there. And he told, you know, he told, even he told truths, but he, un he uncovered his father to his brothers, and the, you know, the Bible said what happened to Ham, that God cursed him and his descendants after him. And other brothers walked in backwards, and they covered up the father's neck, and took a blanket, and they covered their father's nakedness. And the blessing of God remained upon Shem 
and Jacob it, it stayed upon them because they did, they went in there and covered their father. They covered even if it was a truth. They still a gossiper can. I mean, sometimes they tell the truth, but they tell things they shouldn't be telling, and they start hurting things. And it makes, and it makes it difficult for quarrels to to uh, quarrels to die down when someone keeps fueling the fire, so to speak, stoking the fire. Without wood, a fire goes out. Without a gossip, a quarrel dies down. As charcoals to embers and as wood to fire, so is a quarrelsome person for kindling strife. You, have you ever seen that commercial back in the day when they had the, the beer commercial, the Bud Light commercial? And they had a guy sitting in the middle and he would say, look at the guy on the left and go, less filling. And the guy on the right, he'd say, tastes great. <coughs> Excuse me. And they would... And then he would move, remove himself out of the way, and then people, the, the taste great guy would fight with the guy that said less filling, and they would, they would go back and forth, and they would scream their cause and stand their cause, and taste great, no, less filling, no, taste great, no, less filling. And then he would just remove himself from the equation there and let those two duke it out. That's what gossips are. Gossips cause strife, trouble, and they cause great pain. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Either you deal with strife, you deal with gossip in your midst, and you deal with those kind of individuals where they will end up destroying an entire people. They'll destroy a church. They'll destroy an organization. They'll destroy friendships. They'll destroy marriages. And so, you know, we, we want to be careful, certainly never to spread gossip, but we're not talking about spreading gossip, gossip nearly as much as what we're talking about is recognizing people that are gossips that are around you that are in your sphere of influence. And what do you do to handle them when you encounter them? Says this, well, well they're nice and we like them, and that, but, but if they're causing toxicity, if they're causing poison, they're causing strife, the Bible says have no fellowship with them. The Bible says that, that uh, in, there are things that are an abomination to God and it says that he that sows seeds of discord among the brethren is an abomination to the Lord. Sowing seeds of discord to get people upset. Well, I'm just telling people the truth. You know, the bottom, causing strife and division, causing trouble, God says don't cause trouble. Amen. So let's, so let's go a little bit further. I've got a lot to cover here just in about the next seven minutes, so it'll, I can't expound too much on it. I think we understand what it's saying. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the inmost parts. Choice morsels, that means the best food. We, what is it about us that we want to hear the dirtiest things on people? When we hear these things, it's like we've got something on somebody. And even whether it's true or not, it's things we know something. And, and, and when, when, when you speak them, they go down to the inmost parts. You know what that means? These things are not light things. These words go down into the, to the spirit of a man. You know that wounds on the outside get healed quicker than wounds on the inside. And it takes the anointing of the Holy Spirit to heal broken heart. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor to heal, to heal the broken hearted. It takes an anointing to heal the broken hearts of people when people have spread all kinds of manner of evil against them. Amen. They go down into the inmost parts. Those words hurt people. When you start gossiping about people, you cause so much pain. Is that your, is that your desire? Is that, well, what is it that makes them that they can do? But again, the proverb says they cannot, they will find no rest until they bring pain or harm to someone. They're wicked people. They're dangerous people. And, and whether they're a born-again Christian or not, there's an evil presence Jesus even said, he goes, you don't know what spirit you're of. God did not come to, to judge the world. He came to save it, not to judge it, not to condemn it. So we don't, at that moment when the, a gossip, what they don't realize is, is that Satan is using their mouth. You know, what the, you know what Satan is called? The accuser of the brethren. And they bring accusation against people, a railing accusation, particularly against the leadership. Bring no railing accusation against an elder, lest it be by two witnesses. You bring no railing accusation. Stop and think about that for a second. Uh, verse, verse 23, like coating of silver dross on earthenware are fervent lips with an evil heart. Fervent lips, wow, like a coating of silver on, on earthenware. A coating of silver on earthenware. So you put this silver 
on earthenware, all right? That, that's that's their, their pots. It says, there are fervent lips with an evil heart. I mean, is there a more lethal combination than someone that's got an evil heart? They're angry, they have offense, they have a root of bitterness, and boy, they've got a lip, they've got lips to go spread that out. They just they can't keep it to themselves. They have to share it with somebody. You know, the Christians are supposed to be sharing the good news and to speak a good report and to bring a good report and to lay no, no stumbling block before their brother. Yet a gossip has no problem. They ignore. There's no spreading of the gospel. It's the spreading of gospel, go, gossip. And they got the first three letters right, didn't they? Um, verse 24. Enemies disguise themselves with their lips, but in their hearts they harbor deceit. A gossip very often tries to make friends and, and, and make, they make friends with other people with the information that they think they possess. And they're trying to make friends into themselves by saying, hey, I know a secret, I know some things. And it's amazing how many insecure people will listen to it. But if you really value your heart and value what's down on the innermost parts of you, you will find a way, even if you have to be, and I won't say rude, but just to say, you know what, I don't want to be a participant in this. Because you know what, I'll tell you what a good boss will do. A good boss, when they, has a, when they have a dispute between two people, and a good spiritual leader will do, he will bring in the two parties and they'll have them tell the story right in front of the other one. It's amazing when you are confronted. It's amazing when gossipers are confronted how quickly they backpedal. Gossipers work in secret. They like to pull people aside. They like to pull people aside and share their side of the story. But they don't ever let the other side speak their side of the story. They always, they always operate in darkness. And this is exactly what the Satan does. But when, when you bring it to the light, it's amazing how stories get clean, cleared up. Bring the other party in. And let the other party give their side also. Amen. And then usually you're going to find that truth <laughs> where he's got somewhere in the middle. Amen. All right. Let's continue here. Um, Though their speech is charming, do not believe them. For seven abominations fill their hearts. Their malice may be concealed by deception, but their wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. They hide it and go, we love you, brother. Oh, you're this. And then they, they got all the Christianese stuff down. But privately, they've got something in their heart. They'll, to, in other words, to, their, to your face, they'll be one way. But behind your back, they'll be another way. Be careful of these individuals. You know, the Bible says, mark them which cause division among you and have no fellowship with them. Yet you treat them like a brother but you have no fellowship with them. Why? Because when you fellowship with them, two things happen. Number one, you are giving them opportunity to display some more of their gossip. And number two, you're putting yourself in a position to have to deal with things that, to hear that you may not want to, that you may not be equipped to deal with. So don't put yourself in a position to receive that and don't put them in a position to, to you know, to act out and once again by spreading vile rumors and and, and, and bring it railing accusation against individuals. It says their malice may be concealed by deception, but their wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. Gossips always get exposed. And you know what happens to them? They're always the victim. They always, you see, they hop from church to church. They got from this group to that group, and they're always on the move because they've got to find a new audience because when people really find out, because anybody can fall and have a bad day, but we're talking about people that continue to do this over and over and over. It will destroy the chiefest of friends. It will destroy the chiefest of relationships. If, if that lying tongue, and that, it, or not even a lying tongue, but a tongue that exposes, that people that say, you're too dangerous for me to hang out with because you soon learn if they'll do that to them, they'll certainly do that to me. And as, as soon as what? And then it usually happens when they don't get their way or they're not brought into the crowd or they don't get the promotion or they don't get, the, then they begin to release their tongue. All right? Well, we see in the media, they do it all the time. They bring gossip and innuendo and rumors against certain leaders, and they try to destroy with innuendos and half-truths, and, and you don't get to hear the other side of the story many times with mainline media. Um, well, but this is, and this is the thing for all, any and all gossipers, and I, there's no gossipers that are listening to this, I can guarantee. They, they guarantee that as soon as they talk about the subject, they turn it off. But just in case there are anybody that's a gossiper that's watching this, Here's what the future is for you. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it. If someone rolls a stone, it will roll back on them. When you speak words against anybody, 
in private or in public, in a public place or, or, or privately, you whisper in their ears and you cause the people that are not present pain. God says, you're digging a pit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. See, here comes the fear of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. I feel the presence of God coming on me right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You start doing that stuff. He says, whatever you sow, do not be deceived. God is not going to be made a fool out of. Whatever you've sowed in someone's life, you're going to reap in your own life. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Um, I, I, I'm, the anointing's on me, but i got something to say here in the next two minutes that I feel the Spirit of God. Um, i got, I got uh, one more verse to read. It says, A lying tongue hates those that it hurts, and a flattering mouth works runs. When you speak evil about someone, never convince yourself that you love them. Because when you speak anything evil against anybody, hatred is in your heart. Like, can I just share this with you? He that hates his brother without cause, he that hates his brother without a reasonable cause, should we say, is a murderer. And we know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. The last few days, the Spirit of God's been speaking to me, and I will take the last two minutes here to talk about it, about the fear of the Lord. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is clean, and I'm going to be speaking a lot on the fear of the Lord in the upcoming uh, sessions and in church services. When you, when you see society running amok like it is right now, and men dressing like women and women dressing like men, and you see all the, you know, what, they, what the world calls political correctness that is getting more out of control every day, and it's invaded the church too. And the church, here's what the scripture says, that we're to have no fellowship with, the, with, the, with unrighteousness. What, what communion does light have with darkness? What communion does something that of light have with something that is dark? And so when you, so in the Christian, so in Christianity you see that people go, well, I'm born again, don't judge me. But the fear of the Lord is this, is, the, is if I do things that hurt the body of Christ, Jesus said, when you've done it to the least of them, you've done it to me. Stop and think the next time you hurt somebody, the next time you take advantage of somebody, you're not doing that to them. You're doing it to Jesus. And it's only a matter of time till Jesus comes and steps in the road to correct it. And when Jesus comes to correct it, it's not generally a, a fun experience. Now, we don't have many people that preach this anymore because it's not going to cause church attendance to increase and tithes just flow in. But our job is to preach the word of the Lord. And there are certain news organizations that are standing up for righteousness today, and they're being deplatformed and taken off social media, and, 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 and they're having to find other ways to get the truth out. But they're just, that's the price you pay. It's a price patriots pay to see a country not be destroyed. It's a price that true Christians pay, will, will have to be willing to pay to see a church become healthy, a relationship become healthy. You cannot, I, I, I'll say this, that God says every, every branch that doesn't bring forth fruit is going to be chopped off and thrown into the fire. I'm not saying they're going to hell, and I don't think that's what that scripture means, but it means it's, not going, to, it's going to be cut off from, this, from that assembly. You're going to get to the place where, and I've seen this happen with every gossip I've ever been around that I've ever seen, and I've pastored a few of them. Um, I've, I've, the, it always ends up with nothing but heartache and despair. I knew a gossip one time, and um, they caused a lot of strife and, and a lot of division. And, and I remember hearing about them. Actually, they told me with their own mouth that they had suffered a nervous breakdown they got to a place where they had finally had a nervous breakdown. And they had said many things about me and many difficult things. And they went to my wife, actually, and began to t ask her, could you ever forgive us for what we've said? And, and, our, and, and I, I never will forget that how many years it went on until God finally allowed uh, destruction and decay to happen to their life. But when it hit, it hit hard. And then they were very repentant. And of course, we were merciful and we forgave. Um, I say, of course, um, not everybody forgives, but we did forgive. But it was a lesson that it took a long time to see God correct something. But when it finally hit them, it was one of the most unpleasant things to behold. And I, was, and I found it not easy at all to rejoice in their demise. You think sometimes, well, they're going to get theirs. But when they get theirs, it, it's an ugly thing. It's a sad thing to watch when the chickens come home to roost. 
If you're a gossip today, if you've been giving your tongue over to speaking evil things about other people that aren't present to defend themselves, stop it. And if you're, if you're listening to that kind of stuff, do your best to say, can we please not talk about this? Say, well, they may start talking evil about you. That's a spirit of control and intimidation. And it's better to cut that off in a very nice way. You who are spiritual, all right? If you're spiritual, just say, can we please not get in this conversation? Because they're not here to defend themselves. They're not here to tell the other side of the story. And let's not put ourselves in a position to get ourselves into trouble. Yeah, you know, it, 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 they, you may not, they, they may start talking bad about you. But I'll tell you what, or it may cause them, as I was reading this morning, rebuke a fool. It says, don't rebuke a fool, lest he despise you. And it says the next verse, rebuke him. Rebuke him, lest he be wise in his own conceit. And it means this, eventually we're going to have to start looking at people in love, with love, and say, you know what, I appreciate it if you wouldn't speak that way anymore. And I think it's gone on long enough with, with people, and sometimes we've reached the point where something on the inside, the Bible says long suffering is not forever suffering. That there comes a time that need to be confronted in love, told the truth in love, and if it causes a relationship to end, it's best that relationship end than you be poisoned with someone else's root of bitterness, and they've shed their offenses over upon you and now you've got to deal with things every time you see the people they talk about you got to deal with those vain imaginations we're going to have to start cutting off the things if your eye offend you cut it off if your hand offend you cut it off it's better for you to have a to be partial and to enter into the presence and the goodness and the glory and the blessing of god than have your whole body be cast into the grave destroyed because we listened continually to things that are that are not advantageous for our spiritual growth. I went a little longer today, but hopefully this will, I mean, the fear of the Lord is clean and we're going to have to start being, we're going to have to start being a little bit stronger and bolder in what we're allowing to come into our minds and ears and our eyes. Amen. Love you. We'll see it, uh, I guess Monday. All right. God bless you. We'll see you Monday. 